Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I get asked the common question of what kind of handgun or what kind of pistol should I carry or should I carry this or should I carry that? Can I use this for concealed carry? These kinds of questions that I get often uh, by friends and family. So I wanted to hit you with my opinion on what I've tried and then from there you can make your own decisions. Uh, personally, currently, I carry a Glock 19 firearm. This bad boy is a Gen 5, fantastic, and I will not carry anything else, simply because Glocks are, in my opinion, superior firearms. You can't go wrong. You can run them dry. You can shoot crazy ammunition through them. You can use them nonstop. You can forget to clean it. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can neglect on this firearm, and it's still going to work for you the next day. It's fantastic. Uh, but I'm not here to promote Glock. I'm here to talk about your options. So, my three favorite concealed carry firearms that I have tried that I would recommend is a Springfield XDS. The reason I would recommend this one is because it is compact, yet still feels large enough to be a midsize almost. Additionally, it's one of the safest options I have on the table. Uh, let me explain. So, my Glock has no safety on it no external safety switch, no grip safety. The only thing it does have is this tr trigger safety here. So this middle button here, once it's depressed, the trigger can be pulled. But, and let me show you here, clear firearm, we're good, no magazine. If I tug on this from just the side, it's not, it's not gonna work. As soon as I lay my finger over the whole thing, it's gonna work. <clears throat> the Springfield XDS has a grip safety, which is on the back of the firearm. As soon as you grip it, the trigger can be pulled. Additionally, with that, it has an external safety switch, which you're all familiar with. It's just typical run-of-the-mill safety. Uh, and then additionally, has that trigger safety on it as well, where the whole trigger has to be pressed down with your finger so it can't catch on anything and go off accidentally. Uh, the Springfield, just fantastic. One of my buddies actually carries the Springfield. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's about the size of my Glock here, but I'd say it's just a little bit shorter of a barrel and just a little bit thinner of a hand <clears throat> of a hand grip. I, I like it. Fantastic. I'm not going to carry it, though. <laughs> it's not a Glock, uh, but he loves it. It's the only thing he carries, and he's not a Glock guy, so it makes sense. The next option is something that I did carry for a while. I used a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, which at the time I had purchased the Performance Center Edition. So the flight and the barrel right near the muzzle here, I'll show you on my Glock, right up in here and the barrel as well, were both ported, which is to assist with recoil when shooting a firearm. Additionally, it featured uh, night sights, which you can see on my Glock here. I do not have night sights on it, but they glow green and red and they're a little bit more visible in low light environments which can help with uh, defensive training defensive shooting defensive situations from your vehicle inside your home etc uh, so I, I thought i'd give it a whirl tried it fantastic loved it loved it uh that glock or that uh smith and wesson i had in 40 caliber though and that was a mistake i should have gone with nine millimeter i will not make that mistake again uh, the one thing I will say is that when it comes stock, it is the grip. It's very slick. It, there's not a lot of traction there for your hand. I had to install an external part. Uh, it was some Talon grips, grip tape. I put on there myself and boom, perfection. It had a external safety switch, but I believe that's the only safety feature it had. Uh, it felt like a midsize to me. The only trouble I had, though, was it was pretty thin. Uh, it was lightweight, even with a full mag, is about 20 ounces, give or take, so real comfortable, but it was a little thin. Wasn't a huge fan of that. I mean, the Glock's a little thicker. Ah, well, it worked. It served its purpose, but it still wasn't a Glock. Uh, thirdly, a Glock 19. I mean, <laughs> you knew that was coming. The reason I say Glock 19 is, as I mentioned before, extremely reliable. You can neglect them, mistreat them, and they're still going to work for you. 
if you take care of them, though, they're going to last you a lifetime. Absolutely, hands down. There's a reason our law enforcement chooses Glocks to protect themselves with the majority of the time. There's a reason everybody's heard of a Glock. I mean, it's just superb. I choose the Glock 19. I have a Gen 5 Glock 19, chambered in 9mm if you don't know. Uh, it's the only thing I'm going to carry. I carry an appendix carry. I have a bull, or not a bulldog, a uh, Blackhawk appendix carry holster. Just a simple little thing uh, that I carry with. Um, I have an outside the waistband bulldog holster that I carry it in. That's only on some occasions, though. I personally prefer concealed carry. Other than that, when I'm out on the range, I have a G-Code drop leg holster. It's a, with an RTI hanger, so it's very interchangeable, very comfortable. Rests right where my hands naturally hangs, and you're not going to talk me out of a Glock. But Glocks might not be for you. The reason I went with Glock is because of grip. When I hold this Glock, I feel like I'm meant to hold a Glock. Not everybody feels that way. My buddy I mentioned earlier, he doesn't like the way a Glock feels in his hand, and that's okay. He prefers the Springfield, and I believe that Springfield is the XDS, but don't quote me on that. I can't really remember. Uh, besides that, though, grip, you need to figure out what caliber works for you. I personally recommend 9mm. It's got more stopping power. It's a larger round, a little bit more potent, but a common choice, especially among... Uh, newcomers to conceal carry is the 380 caliber, which nothing wrong with it. It's still going to get the job done. Still a firearm, still a bullet, but it's just a little bit weaker than the nine millimeters going to run, which is okay. Like I said, it's still going to get the job done. Uh, but 40 isn't really worth it. I wouldn't go with 40 if you could help it. Uh, 45 is good, but once you get up to 45 caliber, you're talking about a full-size handgun, and that's not real comfortable for concealed carry in any concealed carry, especially appendix, because that thing is long. Uh, besides that, though, there's not a whole lot more that goes into a firearm. I mean, you've got to figure out what looks good, what feels good, uh, the type of caliber that you're comfortable with. You know, go down to your local gun store. Try out some different guns, have them pull them out, explain them a little bit to you, grip them in your hand, uh, see what feels natural. I mean, if you need to go the extra step, go down to your local gun range, rent out these guns that are either the, the one you want to try or rent out a caliber size if you're testing calibers and test it out in the gun range. See what caliber feels good. Go shoot a 45, go shoot a 9, go shoot a 380. See which one you're comfortable with. Work within your comfort level. <clears throat> but whatever you choose, you need to train with it all the time. Okay. This thing, all the time. Non-stop training with this thing. Whether I'm doing dry runs, if I'm practicing muscle memory, if I'm out at the range pra practicing accuracy, speed, transitions, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> you need to practice. Okay. A firearm is only as good as the person wielding it. So, if you're letting your skills slack, then your firearm's going to slack. And when it comes down to it, when you have the speed of the violence of action in that moment where someone attacks you and you don't know how to operate or you don't know how to use your firearm in the best possible capacity in order to defend yourself, it doesn't matter what you got. It doesn't matter if you got a Kimber, a Springfield, a Glock. If you don't know how to use it, you're dead meat. Don't be dead meat. Okay. Very important to train. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm very biased as far as firearms training is concerned. Uh, it's kind of what I do. You can always contact me with any questions. You have my email. Okay. If you don't, it's Drew, D R E W dot kits, K I T T S at 14th defense team dot com. Okay, hit me up with your emails. Let me know what's going on. You got a question, you need an answer. If I didn't address something or you have a specific firearm you want to talk about, let me know. The only thing is I don't recommend the Glock 43. It's too small, in my opinion. And I don't recommend Ruger firearms because, to be honest, in my experience, they're just wonky. Other than that, though, I mean, it, the rest is up to you guys. Take the initiative. Try some stuff out. Who knows? That's all I got for you today, guys. Be safe.
Be ready.